afternoon, everybody. Severin here with Start From Seed. This afternoon, I was down in the garden and I harvested a lot of stuff, some tomatoes, some cucumbers, uh, green beans, as well as a couple of peppers. And I got enough cucumbers to actually be able to pickle today. Um, when I weighed these out, after I gave a few to my neighbors, there's about seven pounds. Now, I got a lot of stuff to do today. Normally, I make my own pickle brine. I generally get that from a tested recipe. Usually I like to get those from Ball. But today I am just, I got too much going on. So I'm going to use some Mrs. I think it's Mrs. Wages bread and butter pickles. Now this one here is for nine to 11 pounds of pickles. But if you also find any Mrs. Wages, uh, you'll also find kosher dill pickles for refrigerator pickles, uh, non-processed pickles. And these only require about two pounds of cucumbers. Um, also have them in uh, the bread and butter refrigerator as well. But these pickles I'm going to go ahead and process and I'm also going to um, process them so they are shelf stable. Uh, bread and butter are my dad's favorite. My brother also likes them a lot. I'm not a big fan of them because I want my pickles to be sour. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now I'm not going to get involved too much to tell you the right way or the wrong way to process and can and preserve your food. I am not a rogue canner. I believe in doing everything by the book. If you want more information on exactly how to process uh, your food, your pickles and things like that, I'm gonna leave a link below to the National Center for Home Food Preservation. They have all the information on there on how to process pretty much anything and what you're not allowed to process, what you shouldn't be processing. So um, hang out with me this afternoon. Let's get these pickles going.
Okay, now that my brine has come to a boil and my jars are filled with sliced cucumbers, I'm going to go ahead and ladle that hot brine right into the jars. I'm going to debubble them with a little plastic uh, knife thing, and then I'm going to wipe the rims clean, put the lids on, screw the rings on, fingertip tip tight, and then put them down into the hot water bath and process them for about, I believe it's 15 minutes. I'll double check. And um, the reason I have to do 15 minutes is because of my elevation. I'm slightly above 1,000. So I do have to process everything just a little bit longer. Okay, now that I got all my jars filled up here, for the most part, I'm now going to take this little tool here. It is called a debubbler. And what I'm going to do, and you have to do this, is I'm going to go all the way around the jars here, making sure that I get out any bubbles that are trapped inside there. This is not an option. You have to do this. Oops. Let's put him in there. And as you see, as I'm doing this, it's also making more room in here to add a few more slices and some more broth or brine. Let's get to work. What I want to do is I want to make sure that this brine is up to this part. I'm going to bring it up to there. And this kind of a brine, because I put in seven cups of sugar, <laughs> um, you want to not skimp and not wipe your jars down. You have to wipe your jars down. Let me get a spoon here, a ladle, a little ladle. I don't have one. I did have one. Where did it go? Nope. So I'm just going to top some of these jars off here. Using the funnel just makes it easier so you don't spill stuff all over the place. I'm just looking for jars that need a little help in hand here. Okay. This has got too many in it. This doesn't have enough. See how that works? The debubbler that you get is also a measuring tool to tell you to um, an inch lip. We're, we're just not going to talk about that. We'll just skip. I like to take a little bowl of vinegar, especially for these bread and butter pickles. And I want to wipe the rims and around here because this stuff is so sticky. And if your rims are dirty, you're not going to get a good seal. You're not going to get a seal at all. And then all this hard work of growing and cutting and cooking a brine and stuffing these and then processing them will all have been for nothing. That is why it is so important to not be a rogue canner, to do things like you're supposed to. You can see that's, I got a lot of stuff on there. Well, let me flip that over. You can see it's a lot of goop on these jars. And um, because I'm so paranoid, <laughs> we're going to do that one more time with a clean paper towel just to be safe. Because seven cups of sugar is a lot of money. 
That is a lot of money to lose. And I got my water bath canner over here on the stove and I got the water boiling in there. It looks pretty clean. I think I did good the first time, but gotta be sure, right? So now I'm going to take this leftover vinegar and I'm going to dump it inside my canner there and because I have hard water and um, this will keep my jars from getting all cloudy and foggy. So you put your lid on center, rings on, finger tip tight. If you tighten this up like it's a pickle jar that is going back into the refrigerator, your lid is going to buckle and your jar will be ruined. You'll have to eat those right away. Make sure you do not push down on these buttons. You don't want to mess with them. That's, to me, what fingertip tight is. I don't know if you can see this, but let me move this one. So I just put my lid on. Oop. Put my ring on. And then once the jar kind of moves a little bit, then it's good. That's, that's how I do it. And you want to make sure that you are using brand new seals. Do not reuse your seals. There are lids out there that are reusable. I haven't used them. Uh, a lot of people in the in my canning groups talk about them, how much they love them. And there's a learning curve to them. So I just, I'm not ready for that. Plus, if I had those reusable lids, I would not be giving them out to people. So... Let's get these in the canner. Okay, so I got my canner going here. Woo, that is some steam. Now this is a hot water bath here. So I'm gonna get my jars in. And I wanna make sure that this water goes about two inches over the top of these lids. So once I get them all filled in here, we'll see how much water I need to add. And then I will have to bring this water back to a boil. Oops, my little holder snapped out of place here. Once it comes to a boil again, I will start the timer for 15 minutes. When those 15 minutes are up, I will turn these off. I will take them off the heat. And I will set a timer for five minutes. Once that five minutes is up, then I will take these out of the hot water bath, set them on the counter, and not touch them. Oh, I did not fill that one up very well, did I? Woo! And then we're gonna wait for the tops to ping. Uh-oh, let's see, can I get? I think that's as all my canner will hold. Let's see here. Now, I know it can hold more than that. There we go. Ta-da! Okay. Let me see here. Now, if you need to add some water to this, you sure can. Well, you have to if you need to. Let me double check here. Um, let me see where this is. I think I want to add just a wee bit more water to that. It's a little leftover tea kettle water. Nothing goes to waste around here. I'm just gonna set the lid on here. Oh, almost forgot. That extra vinegar, that leftover vinegar, just plop that right in there. I'm just gonna set the lid on. We're not gonna lock this into place. And uh, we're just gonna let it get to a boil. Okay, everybody. Let me grab my pot holders here. I believe we have what we call a boil is happening down there. So I'm going to put the lid back on. Once again, I'm not locking it. I don't want to pressure can these. And I'm going to set my timer. 
for 15 minutes. You can hear Catcher crying down here. He just woke up from his nap. Huh, Bubba? Yeah. All right, and uh, when that 15 minutes is up, it'll be time to take the canner out, or take the cans out of the pot. Timer's going off. I'm just gonna shut that off. I'm gonna take this lid that we just have setting off. Watch yourself, pull it away from your face. off the burner. I'm going to set the timer again for five minutes. You do not want to take these jars out right away after they're done processing. Every recipe will tell you how long to let the jars set. So we're just going to give this about five minutes and then make sure you've got your tool with you and then we're going to pull these out. Okay, our timer's going off. We let that set for five minutes. We use our little holder here. And it doesn't look like I have any siphoning. And you wanna just take these out, lift them straight up. Do not tip them over. I did not pack these enough. I know there's water on the lids when you pull them out. But do not tip them over. You can get a false, false seal that way. Now, do not flip these upside down. Do not put them too close to each other. Do not stack them. Do not lift them and shake them. We're just gonna let them sit here. And we're gonna need them to ping. We're gonna need those tops to ping, which a lot of them have already done that. They've already sealed. Okay, everybody, thanks for hanging out with me this afternoon here in the kitchen. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a long, long day. Uh, once again, if you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave me a comment down below. And once again, and as always, happy gardening, everybody. I wanted to show you down in the basement here where the pantry is that um, when I, the pickles did really well. When I first took them out of the canner, it looked like I had four pickle slices in there. And like all the pickles were at the top and all the juice was at the bottom. But they settled just fine. And I delivered them to my dad. And he did say they were probably the best, the best bread and butter pickles I've ever made year to date. So I just wanted to show everybody that, that the pickles turned out wonderful. And, uh. So it's all my other pickles that I made, <laughs> along with some dilly beans, my favorite.